I freaking love the NVIDIA T600 and the T400 too. But what can it do? Ray tracing? DLSS? Encoding? Overclocking? Well, let's answer that today, shall we? Oh, hey. Hi. How you doing? I I'm TechTweeb. Uh, nice to meet you if you're new here. Thanks for clicking on the video and subscribing. <laughs> That's always nice. So this is the NVIDIA T600. I've done a few videos on this thing. Full review, performance comparison to the GTX 1650 and the 1050 Ti, testing it in some games. There's links to a few videos in the description below. The short version of all that is that uh, it's a really great card. It's a great value for the performance you get. It can be found at different prices all over the place, but I paid 185 bucks for this. It offers way better performance per dollar than a GTX 1650, for instance, and it has other benefits like being low profile and single slot so it'll fit in those small form factor PCs. It only pulls 40 watts so you probably won't need any special power supply and it has four display port ports so you could get a four monitor setup going. Not that anyone would do such a thing. You'd have to be <laughs> crazy to want four monitors, right? I want to do more videos on this GPU, but I really needed to make this video first because you guys keep asking the same questions, even though I answered a few of them in my other videos. But let's get this all sorted here in one place, once and for all. What can this card do? And the T400 too, by the way. Everything in this video applies to the entire T-series. The T and T600 stands for Turing because this is a Turing architecture. Extra GPU. It's powered by the same technology that powers the RTX 20 series, like the RTX 2060 or the 2080 Ti or whatever. They're RTX cards, and those cards can do lots of things that non-RTX cards can't do, like ray tracing, DLSS, and of course they have NVEG hardware encoding for streaming and recording, and they have tensor cores for AI applications like NVIDIA Broadcast. So it's reasonable that people wonder if this T600 can do any of that stuff too. I mean, it's made with the same architecture as those cards, so can it do any of that stuff? Oh yes and no. It can do some stuff, but not other stuff. Well, we'll test each of these in a minute, but let me explain how this stuff works really quick. I'll put on your learning helmets, kids. It's time for Tech Dweebs. Fun learning tech time for dweebs. Uh, that's you, dweeb. This, this is much more complicated, but here's a short version. There are lots of types of components to a GPU that let it do different stuff. There are the CUDA cores, which are for raw 3D performance. Every GPU released in the last 15 years has those. You also have hardware encoding for streaming and recording without a substantial performance hit. The RTX series also has RT cores for allowing ray tracing. And it also has Tensor Cores, which are for AI applications, like DLSS, which is deep learning super sampling, and also other AI applications like NVIDIA Broadcast, which uses AI to do things like remove the background of a video or filter out voice from background noise. So if our T600 is part of this GPU family, does it get all that stuff? Well, no. It's, it's more like the black sheep of the family. It does get the CUDA cores and EDVEC hardware encoding. It wouldn't be much of a modern GPU if it didn't have those, but it doesn't have RT cores or Tensor cores. That means that while the software might allow you to enable ray tracing or DLSS or whatever, this GPU doesn't have the hardware to back it up. That doesn't mean that you can't try it out. It just means that it probably won't work or you might be disappointed with the results. But we won't know for sure until we put it to the test. We're testing five things today. Ray tracing, DLSS, NVIDIA broadcast, video encoding, and we'll see if we can overclock this thing at all to get some extra performance. Starting off with ray tracing, uh, this will be an easy one. We'll start up a game and turn on ray tracing and see how it looks and how it performs. First, I'll show you how it should work. We're going to see how my RTX 3050 performs in Cyberpunk with high settings. We then get 41 FPS without ray tracing, as you can see. And with ray tracing, we go down to 19 FPS. It's different in different games, but ray tracing takes away about half the performance here, which is understandable. The the performance penalty for ray tracing is quite substantial. So how does our T600 do? Well, here's Cyberpunk without ray tracing, running a guy at 1080p with the low settings. We're gonna get an average of 26 FPS. And what happens when we turn ray tracing on? Well, we can't. We can't toggle it. 
but that's understandable. Uh, th this card does not have ray tracing cores, right? So even though it's a Turing family GPU, it doesn't have all the features that the other Turing GPUs have. It's not a true RTX card. It's a good card. It's got the same CUDA cores and architecture as the other 20 series cards. It just doesn't have those RT cores that allow us to do any ray tracing. So ray tracing is a big fat no for the T series of GPUs. That's fine though. A peg of premium for ray tracing is a waste of money, in my opinion. I made a whole video about that. It's uh, linked in the description below. But DLSS is worth paying for. DLSS is great technology. It lets us run games at lower resolutions and upscale them with some AI sharpening to make them look like they're running at higher resolution. And it works awesome. I recommend RTX cards for that reason alone. It's definitely worth paying extra for. So what about DLSS on the T600? Well, again, we're gonna see how it should work. Here we are back in Cyberpunk on my RTX 3050, high settings without DLSS, we're getting 41 FPS. And with DLSS on and set to balance, we get 64 FPS, which is a 50% boost. The graphics are less sharp than native, but it still looks good and we get better performance. That's how it should work. As for the T600, well, here we are running at 1080p, low settings, we're going to average 26 FPS, the same as before, but DLSS should give us a pretty big boost to performance if it works properly. So let's turn on Balance DLSS and see what we get. Well, at least we could turn it on, but oh dear. We actually went down in performance when we should have gone up. Now we're only getting 25 FPS. Uh, that's not supposed to happen. But again, th this shouldn't come as a surprise. This GPU doesn't have tensor cores, remember? So AI powered technology like DLSS just won't work like they're supposed to. Even though you technically could turn on DLSS, we don't have the hardware to back it up. So unfortunately, DLSS is another big fat no, which is a big shape. If, if we could get DLSS on a cheap card like the T600 or the T400, that'd be freaking awesome. It would be nice if Nvidia would release a budget low-end GPU that performed well for the price like the T600 but still offered those tensor cores for DLSS. That would be an awesome product in my opinion. But we're not out of options. We'll have to settle for FSR upscaling, which is really good. It runs on any GPU because it doesn't use tensor cores. It just uses regular old CUDA cores and it doesn't look as good as DLSS, but at least we get some way to upscale our games and get them looking and running a bit better. I really like FSR personally. I have a video coming uh, soon on the difference between DLSS and FSR and how to optimize for both of them, so hit subscribe so you don't miss that. Next up, video encoding. Can you do things like record and stream with this card? In most situations, if you want a decent streaming and recording performance, you need a GPU with hardware encoding. Only garbage loser GPUs don't have hardware encoding, and I'm pretty sure no company would release a piece of junk like that in modern times, right? But this is a budget GPU. Don't forget that. The T600 is 185 bucks. And the T400 is only a hundred bucks. So do we get hardware encoding and streaming and recording for our low cost of entry? Well, let's find out, right now. First, we need our baseline. So here's Cyberpunk again on the 3050. High settings. Without using encoding to record the gameplay, we get 41 FPS average. And when we start recording, we go down to 39 FPS. So a little performance hit, but not much. And the recorded video looks just fine. So what about the T600? Before recording, we're running at 1080p, low settings, and we're averaging 26 FPS. Let's open up OBS and see what happens. Over here in the settings is where we'll see that, look, yeah, we, we we have Edvec hardware encoding as an option, so we should be good to go. Let's try it out. Click record and back in the game. We go down a bit to 24 FPS, so our frame rate did take a tiny little hit. And that happens with every GPU to be honest, but how is the recording quality? <laughs> well, it's great. This recorded fine. You're watching the recording now. No issues at all. No stuttering, no artifacts, just pure, clean, smooth video. I turned on FSR for this part, by the way, just so that the video would be smoother. So Edvec definitely works on the T600. You'll have no problem streaming or recording on this GPU. So video encoding is a big fat yes. Okay, what's next? Let's do a NVIDIA broadcast because I'm genuinely curious about how that'll work and I haven't even tried it yet. 
in theory, it should not work. It's an AI-based application that requires dedicated tensor cores, and since our T600 doesn't have those and it fell flat on its face when we tried out DLSS, I'm not hopeful that we'll have any success here. There are two features of NVIDIA Broadcast that I'll show you. Let's start up NVIDIA Broadcast and see be we be what we get. We'll use by 3050 so you can see how it should work first. The first feature is where it will intelligently blur the background of the video. As you can see, my Bebo stuffy is mostly in focus and the background is blurry. Uh, it, it works much better with human faces though. I'm not, I'm not ready to show you the weebs by real face yet, but we can see that it does work here. And then there's the audio, which is where it will actually identify and remove background noise. And it works really good. Check this out. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, you and me. Testing, testing, all day long. This'll be our testing song. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, you and me. Testing, testing, all day long. This'll be our testing song. That's pretty darn impressive if you ask me. It's all handled by the Tensor cores, which can run the AI algorithms to handle this type of computing. So what about our T600? Can it do this stuff? Well, let's start up NVIDIA Broadcast and see. Um, oh, oh dear. Um, NVIDIA Broadcast won't even open. Uh, again, that's understandable. This card doesn't have Tensor Cores, so it can't do that stuff on a hardware level. And NVIDIA Broadcast won't even start, which means that NVIDIA Broadcast is another big fat no. And last but not least, what about overclocking? Can we overclock this thing to get some extra performance? Well, let's see about that. The little cooler on this thing is not up to the task of squeezing out tons of performance through overclocking. That much I could say for sure. Actually, I had a subscriber tell me that he made his own custom heatsink. He even sent me a photo. Check this out. It's a copper shim and the original cooler clamps it down and thermal pads go over the RAM chips underneath it. I wish I knew how to make that kind of stuff. That's freaking awesome, man. Hats off to you, buddy. But even if our tiny little dorky cooler isn't up to the task, we need to know if it's actually even possible to overclock this thing at all. So let's test that out. MSI Afterburner is my overclocking software of choice. I'll show you how this works with my 3050 first. The way it usually goes is we get MSI Afterburner and a benchmark utility running. My favorite is Unreal Valley because it's so pretty. I like to create a default profile in, in slot one with the default settings so that I could go back to normal settings at any time. And then I create an overclocked profile for slot two. First, we unlock the voltage and max it out if we can. In this case, we don't have voltage control as you can see, which happens on some cards. And then we max out the power and the temperature limit so that we don't have anything holding us back. Then we'll increase the core clock a, a little bit. I like to go 20 megahertz at a time. Apply the change and let the benchmark run for like 10 seconds. If it doesn't crash, then we have a stable overclock and we can try to bump it up some more. Usually I'll keep going until we crash and then I'll bump it down like 20 megahertz just to be safe. I can go up to 150 megahertz on this card and then I'll do the same thing for the memory, but I'll go in 100 megahertz increments and I can go up to 500 megahertz on this card. So before overclocking, we get 115 FPS, and with the overclock applied, we go up to 122 FPS. That's the way this is supposed to work. So let's check out our T600. Well, we can't adjust the voltage. No big deal there. We can max out the power and the temperature. We can select the value for our clock speed, and when we go to apply it, it bumps back down. The overclock, it doesn't stay. No matter what we put here for the clock speed of the memory, we just can't apply the overclock. So yeah, uh, it looks like overclocking isn't even possible on this card. I had the same experience with uh, like laptop integrated GPUs. Uh, they're locked down because of the severe limitations of the hardware design and the cooling. Same here, it's totally locked down. There may be some other tools out there that could bypass the lock. I don't know about them, but if you're savvy on overclocking and know of some way to get around this, let us know in the comments and I'll pin the comment with the solution and maybe I'll even make a video on it. But for now, that's another big fat no, which is a big bummer, obviously. Overclocking is a great way to get more bang for your buck when you buy a GPU. I don't always overclock my GPUs, though. I'm kind of lazy and I don't want to bother dealing with the thermal issues that might come up. And also, I swap out my GPUs often and I have to reconfigure it every single time. And uh, ugh, it's just not worth it to be most of the time, to be honest. And there you have it. Here's our final results. Ray tracing? Nope. No RT cores? So no ray tracing. DLSS? Nope. No tensor cores? So no AI features like DLSS. Or NVIDIA Broadcast? Another nope there. Hardware encoding? Yes. You could totally use this to record and stream. 
That's actually a very important feature. The AMD Radeon 6500 XT that just came out didn't have our hardware encoding and it got slammed in the reviews for that omission. That alone gives this GPU some extra value. And finally, overclocking. Nope, not as far as I can tell. I hope someone knows a way, but I'm not gonna bother messing around with it. This little cooler probably couldn't handle it anyways, to be honest. And I think it performs just fine as it is. That's right, you're just perfect the way you are. You're just a perfect little GPU, are you T600? Yes, you are. Yeah, you can't do ray tracing and you can't do DLSS or broadcast or overclocking, but you're still a great little GPU at a great price. And that's all that really matters. You're awesome at what you do. And you're my new best friend. Oh, uh, this is awkward. That brings us to the end. I have another video coming soon where I'm gonna compare the value of the T600 to the value of the T400, and I'm really excited to see the results there because I have no idea how they'll compare in terms of value. So uh, get subscribed if you don't wanna miss that. And please let me know in the comments below. Did I cover everything? Any more questions about the extra features of the T series of GPUs? Are you thinking about grabbing a T400 or a T600 even though it doesn't do RTX or DLSS or whatever? Do you have one of these? Are you happy with it? I love to hear from you guys in the comments. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video. Or the thumbs down button if you did like it. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. As always, I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.